I'm Charlie Short and I'd like to welcome you to the Tea History Collection and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of everything we have here. So to start with the first thing that hits you as you come up the stairs are these tea chests. So moving from the far end all the way down to where I am now, uh, you can kind of see tea chests evolving throughout the ages. At one end, you can see they start off uh, all in hardwood and as you move down the row, uh, they progress through time to more of a plywood finishing with this tea sack, which is how the vast majority of tea is transported around the world today. Uh, next to this area, we have our display area. So at the moment, we've got a variety of objects to kind of bring, bring the museum to life. We've got a, a very lovely tea tasting uh, cabinet with lots of tea samples inside. Uh, we've got a lot of various novelty teapots um, and some other, other tea samples in the middle. Um, this area is, is really like a, a flexible space that we can change depending on if we want to host events here. So for example, with the Jubilee coming up, uh, we'll, we'll be changed, putting on a Jubilee display. Uh, moving along, this area is our tea tasting counter. So being members of the London Tea History Association, a lot of the members are really experienced tea tasters. So using their experience and advice, we've designed this area so we can have a lot of tea samples running down the counter and host tea tasting events. Over here we've got our library area. So in all of these cupboards we've, we've been lucky enough to receive some donations of many wonderful book, tea related books. So all of these cupboards are already full, full of books. Um, in the centre here you can see we've got like a, a lovely reading area with a bit, a bit of a selection of some magazines and, and some other tea books all around. And then over here we're very proud of our uh, Darjeeling District 3D map sitting on the wall. And then running down here, we've got all of our storage cupboards. So all of these cupboards at the moment are not quite full yet, but we've been receiving quite a few amazing tea artifacts. So this is, this is again where the majority of all the artifacts are stored. And then coming back to the main room, at the centre we've got this lovely large boardroom table. So here we can host events, we can have presentations. So the idea is this museum is, is really a living, functioning museum that, that really brings tea to life. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for coming on the tour today. And if you'd like to know any more about the history here or wanting to get in touch with us, please go to teahistory.co.uk. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the importance of London as a centre for the tea industry. And uh, for a long time, of course, tea and rubber were very much, uh, very much uh, aligned because a number of the plantations grew rubber as well as tea and uh, indeed certainly in Plantation House and I suspect in the commercial sale rooms before um, although tea uh, was the main thing I think rubber was certainly traded in uh, <coughs> there as well but they certainly were in Plantation House which opened in 1935. Now um, there's an interesting thing here about St Catherine Dock uh, this is important to us it was the first plaque that we were able to put up was in St Catherine Dock and that represents very much the first tea coming into London in the days of the Clippers, a uh, very important time. So uh, St Catherine Dock has a special, a special, uh, if you like, um, memory for us. But um, this book I have here shows the whole of the riverside, north and south, and a lot of the famous tea warehouses, Butler's Wharf, Hayes Wharf and, and Jamie's, a number of others, are all shown. These pictures, I think, generally were taken between the two walls. Uh, it's quite a quite a quite a wonderful book. <clears throat> now, going on to the auctions. In 1935, <clears throat> uh, John Bunting built, at vast expense, Plantation House. It was an iconic place, and the auction rooms uh, were vast. Is the only word for it. I was a young man. I started there in 1959, and I used to be one of the young lads taking prizes at the back of the auction room. Uh, in this particular picture of it, you can see around the top there were plaques. These were plaques uh, representing the major growing and uh, consuming countries of the world. Most of these disappeared after the uh, auction room was taken down when the whole building was redeveloped, and we had moved on to Sir John Lyon House, where the auctions then took place for uh, another 30 years. But we were very luck, very fortunate to get the only four surviving plaques, and they are here in the tea collection. Um, and you know we're very proud of that. So the auctions were uh, were, were handled very successfully from 1971 right through to uh, uh, in Sir John Lyon House, that is, until uh, 1990. Um, 
We then had to close the auction room and we went to the London Chamber of Commerce for the last eight years and they, they accommodated us very well and it worked. Quantities of course were, re, were declining all the time and we were talking about implantation house offerings of 60 to 80,000 Chesity a week by the time we got to the end of the sales in, 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 in 1998. We were talking about 10,000 total. So, you know, you can see the way it diminished and hence the reason that we knew that London auction was going to come to a close, which it did uh, on the 29th of June, <coughs> to, uh, 1998, uh, when the only two remaining first-hand brokers, Thompson, Lloyd and Hewitt and Wilson, Smithett and company, my company, uh, sold their, their last catalogues. Um, there was quite a, um, a crowd to come and see it. Obviously, we had, had a, a television cameras a lot. And after the main auction, there was a charity auction where um, uh, certain small parcels were auctioned um, and it, all, the, all the money raised went to the three great charities, the Indian Planters, the Salon Planters and the London uh, Tea Benevolent Association. The final lot selling at a vast amount of money, uh, something that <laughs> amazed us all, I think. Um, and this picture actually was me, not at the charity auction, but at the last knocking down the last lot in the commercial auction prior to the to the charity. So what I'm going to show you briefly is what a tea taster will go through. First of all, he will have his brew prepared and then he will come out and taste. Now, I've only just got one one cup here, but you multiply that by 50 or 100 uh, on long tasting counters. And that's what we would be doing day in, day out. <clears throat> so you start off with the scale. Everything is hand scaled. Uh, I think the weight, I, I can't remember, it's 1.25 grams. It's an old sixpence anyway. So we've done our measure, we've weighed it. It's going into this, this cup here. Uh, this has got little serrations, which when I turn it out, it means the liquor can go into the bowl, but the uh, infused leaf will be trapped. So we pour freshly boiling water onto the, into, the, into the cup. And then we let it brew for six minutes. All tea tasters all over the world do six minutes. That is the recommended ideal time to get the best quality from the, from the tea. So we will now turn into the bowl, let the liquor run through. Very important to make sure all the liquor's gone through because otherwise you'll, you'll and off, we've all done this, you'll turn it out and a lot of boiling tea will splash out onto your hand. So what we have now is the liquor, which we're going to taste, the infused leaf, which we're going to inspect because the, the, we can learn a lot by the infused leaf if it's bright and all the rest of it, and smell it because it smells absolutely delicious when you, when you smell that and the, and the pot. So it's, it's telling me a lot about this tea. This happens to be an orthodox Assam, a tippy golden flowery orange peco, a second flush tea, lovely leaf, a blaze of tip, so we have everything there. We know it's a lovely looking leaf. We know that the infused leaf is bright and has a lovely smell to it. And then we go to the liquor, which we will now taste. Lovely, rich, golden liquor with that lovely quality that you get at the beginning of the Assam season. Uh, a real delight, that one. But there we go. So that's, that, is, that is the whole routine. And it's absolutely vital. And every tea man throughout the world follows that routine totally.